He was a retard. Listen, I don't know what the hell we just watched, but before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's video, I made a Joe Biden level gaffe in yesterday's video, and it's been driving me crazy, so I wanted to address it before we go any further. So for those of you that saw yesterday's video, you will recall that I pulled up this tweet from Prime Minister Black, excuse me, Prime Minister Trudeau of Canada, where he was on a recent trip to Iceland. Now he posted a picture of himself at the famous Rainbow Street in Iceland and wished everybody a happy Pride season. Now in yesterday's video, I said, and I quote, Iceland is far more Pride friendly than Canada could ever dream of being. We'll touch on that in just one second. Well, I never touched on it. Somehow, some way, that clip got edited out. So I don't know if some of you guys were wondering why I never touched on it in this just a second. But this is the clip that I meant to show you guys in yesterday's video of Iceland covered in rainbows. Roll it. Why are there rainbows everywhere in Iceland? The rainbow colors were created to show their immense support for pride, diversity, and acceptance. Iceland is considered one of the most LGBTQ friendly countries in the world, also making it one of the safest. You can find rainbow roads and real rainbows all throughout this gorgeous country. This sounds very gay. All right, I feel much better now that that's out of the way. And now, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And listen, I am exhausted. I got hardly any sleep last night and I'm fighting just to keep my eyes open. But I have an obligation to keep you guys updated on the happenings of Clown World. So it's going to be a quick one, but let's get into it. Now, if you place... <clears throat> Now, if you place your attention on the screen for a moment, we have seen a bunch of photos here on this channel of these trans women who go into the ladies' room, snap a selfie, post it on the interwebs, and hashtag it with woman's restroom. Well, here we have this fellow who goes into the woman's changing room. What the f Buffalo Bill. All right, now I'm going to be fair to that handsome fella in the dress and say that he could be and probably is using one of those unisex changing rooms because most places have those now, right? However, it's not easy giving these people the benefit of the doubt when so many of them say they just want to use the restroom they identify with, then go inside, snap a bunch of selfies in the mirror, post it all over their social media and online with the hashtag bathroom selfie with the big eating grin on their face like it's some kind of game or power trip to them. Anyway, next up, we are about to get a lesson in gender inclusive language from this person. Makes sense. Roll it. A lot of people ask me, how can I make my communication more gender inclusive? Simply put, use names and descriptors instead of assuming people's pronouns. Drop gender-based titles, unless otherwise specified, and address groups of people with y'all, folks, and everyone. When we go out into the world, we see and meet people, and unfortunately, our brain automatically assigns a gender term or pronoun to a person based on certain characteristics. As you already know, these automatic assumptions are often wrong, and they restrict us from truly seeing and affirming people. So let's embrace gender-inclusive language as a way to acknowledge and affirm the identities of all people being addressed. Instead of assigning he, she, or they pronouns when referring to a person, try using that person's name over and over until you learn what pronouns the individual goes by. If you don't have a name to go by, try using descriptor terms like person, coworker, neighbor, individual. Instead of assuming Mr. or Ms. for a person, try dropping gender titles unless otherwise informed. Keep in mind that titles like mix exist as a non-binary option. Note that using gendered terms is wonderful, we just want to avoid automatically assuming or assigning them. So instead of assuming woman or man, use person, individual, human. Instead of assuming husband, wife, try using partner, significant other, spouse. 
Instead of assuming mom or dad, try using parent, guardian, caregiver. And instead of assuming sister or brother, try sibling. That's the stupidest f***ing thing I've ever heard in my life. Okay? That is just stupid. All right, so they are trying to change language in the way we speak, right? And I guarantee you these people, they could snap their fingers and mandate that we use their gender-inclusive language. They would do it in a heartbeat. So not only are they trying to change our language, but our reality. For example, now we've seen a bunch of these TikToks here on the channel where these trans women claim to have a menstrual cycle. I know this is very offensive to you ladies. Roll it. When a person starts taking HRT, well, there hasn't been enough uh, conclusive evidence to say whether there is that ebb and flow naturally while one takes such things. I do know that um, estradiol happens to contain both E1 and E2 respectively, and that the body can produce these things naturally in trace amounts in both male and female respectively. That being said, there just hasn't been enough research done on the trans hormonal cycle, if you will, of whether that actually causes us to have um, a cycle. So once again, we go back on anecdotal evidence and a lot of trans women have stated that they experience what is essentially cramping and bloating and swelling and fatigue and tiredness and all of that. You know, the, the mood swings and the tenderness, et cetera, et cetera. You, you get the point. So is it menstruation? But it is a time, usually every 28 days or so, where we just experience these symptoms. So, you know, I mean, what else is there to call it but a period? What the f*** are you talking about, man? I just do not understand why they are pushing this whole time of the month thing so much. Why is it so hard for them to admit that they just had too many Bud Lights and burritos the night before? That's it. That's it. Anyway, real quick before we go any further, I just wanted to let you guys know that if you like the videos, you're enjoying the content, you want to help support the channel, Grabbing one of these t-shirts is a great way to do it. And here we have my favorite design, Teach ABCs, not LGBTs. Now, it's a great way to show people that you're sick of these teachers indoctrinating our kids with this rainbow propaganda. It is time to stand up and take the rainbow back. Plus, you get a comfortable t-shirt out of the deal. Now, there will be a link in the description box below and floating around on the screen somewhere at some point during this video. Plus, we got a couple of other very cool designs down there for you to check out as well. This is awesome. All right, so this next clip is going to perfectly exemplify just how selfish and self-centered and slightly narcissistic these people are. This is just unbelievable. Roll it. So let's talk a little bit about my pronouns. In my bio, I have the pronouns they, them, unless a pink heart and then a blue heart, right? This was because I originally came up with a color coding system of hearts to explain or show what gender I was feeling that day. So purple for they, them, like non-binary, pink for girl and blue for boy, right? But I've kind of just come to the conclusion that I'd like you all to use they, them for me unless I say otherwise, because for the most part, I always feel somewhere on the non-binary spectrum, however I'm presenting. And it's only on the rare occasion where I only feel, feel female or only feel male that I would like you to use she or he. But that's not that often. And for most of the time, even if I am presenting masculinely, I'm fine with they. I'm always fine with they. But I'm, I have a difficult relationship with she sometimes and I have a difficult relationship with he sometimes. So always use they, them if you don't know my pronouns. I hope this explains it. Thank you for listening. Are you totally deranged? You guys heard that. It was I, I, me, me, me. Do as I tell you. Do as I tell you. It's like, what? You're going to come up to me, up to me, and say that I have to call you a he? Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, next up we have the lesbian Snow White. That's what she calls herself, lesbian Snow White. And she does all these videos with, she just throws any word in before pronoun. Two lead tulip pronouns. 
They're not pronouns. I think she knows that. Anyway, here's another compilation. We did one a little while back, a compilation of all these words she's just making up and saying their pronouns. Roll it. Lily Tulip pronoun, Pop Poppy pronouns, Sun, Sunshine, Perform. Today I'm going to show you how to use Spring Springs pronouns and Buttercup Buttercups pronouns, Butterfly Butterflies pronouns, Ha Ha's pronouns, E Quality pronouns, Pit Pit's pronouns, E Ha's pronouns, Bloom Bloom's pronouns, Normal, Forever Forever's pronouns, Dear Dear's pronouns, Heart Heart's pronouns, and Use Warmth, Warmth, Rose Rose's pronouns, Duff Duff's pronouns, and Sweet Sweet's pronouns. What are we making up words now? All right, real quick before we go any further, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to let this loop on the screen for your viewing pleasure, of course. Of course. Oh, my, my. Anyway, today's video is, is be, being brought to us by our great friends over at the YouTube channel, Patriots Live Here. Patriots Live Here. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring another video. I truly appreciate all the love and support. Now. Patriots Live Here is over there spreading the good word, trying to get some more eyes on his channel. So after this video, if you want to go check him out, I'm sure he would greatly appreciate the support. Now, if you'd like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description box below. And I will say your full name as a sponsor of said video unless stated otherwise by you. Get this off the screen. Ugh. Look at me, I'm a big fat slob! Oh, I think I did forget to mention it, but I will put a link down in the description box below to Patriots Live Here's YouTube channel. Alright, so next up, we have this picture. We've seen a bunch of these lately of these trans women who will post pictures of themselves and caption them with feeling very femme today or looking so beautiful today. And here we have this one. Now, this trans woman also dresses up like a little baby as you will see in one second so this will be you're going to see two pictures it's the same person this picture is captioned with alive and well got my clothes washed took a shower and feeling so pretty a few moments later You look ridiculous. All right, next up we have this young lady who actually made waves a few months ago when she started a campaign to try to force airlines to give people that are huge an extra seat for free or something like that. I don't remember the exact details. I actually covered it here on this channel too, but she had a petition going. She was getting all kinds of signatures. And basically she was trying to force these airlines to cater to the needs of people who are huge and here she is back again talking about getting two seats on an airplane I, I, listen i maybe she should just tighten up just tighten up eat healthy exercise focus on getting into one seat i know it's a lot easier said than done but uh, i don't know anyway roll the film please this is a great question. And as much as I've talked about buying two seats as a plus size traveler who wears a size 6X, I've never given you the real tea on how comfortable it is to sit in two seats. So let me break it down for you in this video. I wear a size 6X and so does my partner. When we travel, we sit together in a row of three. So our situation might be a little bit different than yours. Even though we get a row of three seats, I take up much more room than my partner does. And so we share the middle seat. So I'm taking up like one and a half seats. They're taking up just usually one. When we get three seats and we sit together, there is enough room for us to both sit comfortably but it's a little bit of a tight squeeze and the thing that i find the hardest is the lack of leg room while two seats in economy is enough for me to fly comfortably of course i wish that i had a little bit more room especially when it comes to leg room all in all i will say if you're size 6x like me or smaller you will be able to travel comfortably in two economy seats go on a diet you fat I'm wondering if you guys picked up on the part where that young lady said she wished she had more room on the plane, especially leg room. I'm six foot four. I wished I had more room on a plane, too. The only way for that to happen is if I were to shrink. She can literally shrink. Anyway, guys, we're going to be wrapping it up on this one because... I simply can't take anymore, and I am so exhausted. And I know you guys can't take anymore either. We've all had way too much brain aids for one day. 
And of course, we're going to be wrapping it up with everybody's least favorite former vice president, Joe Biden. And I mean, what do you even say at this point? What do you even say? I mean, all we can hope for is this nightmare to be over soon. And it might be. Things are uh, going in an interesting direction. So anyway, guys, like I said, I'm really tired. I could definitely feel a little off in today's video. So thank you guys for bearing with me. I truly appreciate it. You guys are the best. Things are clearly getting crazy out there. So please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time. I love you guys. Peace. Roll the film, please. But under the trickle-down economic th theory, three quarters of U.S. industries grew more con consecrated. I mean, excuse me, consecrated. I'm thinking I didn't go to mass. They, they were moving to diminish competition. Idiot. And you ain't black.